Hey everybody, it's your old buddy Rem here. A uh, little little preamble to this episode. I have to apologize. Uh, as you know, I run just the best and the brightest equipment available known to man. And every once in a while, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. No, I don't run the best and brightest equipment known to man. I have a shitty setup. Um, so what happened in this episode is that uh, my microphone cut out a few times. Thankfully, we had a Craig backup of the recording in the Discord that we recorded, and uh, we were able to save most of the episode. So um, enjoy it. Uh, I hope you can. It's a little choppy. The audio is a little not up to the quality that I prefer, but um, it's an episode. <laughs> we'll get through it and we'll move on to the next one. Um, there's a whole bunch we had to cut out here. If you were interested, uh, you can find that uh, yeah, on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Stickman. Not that you would want to pay for a, uh, a slightly better than mediocre podcast that was below mediocre. I'm actually pretty shitty this week. Sorry about that. I mean, the content's good. Uh, the, the audio just sucks. I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed with the audio. Anyways, all right. So that's enough. Enjoy the show, and <laughs> we'll be back at you with some, with some quality recordings next week. Thanks. I was born ready. I, I am oh. so ready. That the, the, <laughs> I'm ready to play some bumpers. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome. To episode 92 of the Rich Dickman Show podcast, the podcast that is slightly better than mediocre. I am your host, I am Rem. Back again with you uh, in your ears while you drive or you run or you walk or you do some nonsense. But with me, of course, my good buddy. He hasn't uh, disowned me yet. He had a birthday. Hey, Ray, happy birthday, pal. Happy birthday. Oh, oh thank you. You are such a superb friend of mine. I, I really do I appreciate am. that. Did, did you know? You could say I am a superb yeah. rem. <laughs> did you know you were the first person to tell me happy birthday on my birthday? I mean, you had a, I a three it. hour time advantage. So yeah, we got to gotta factor that in. But still, you were the first. And I believe you were actually the last person that day, too. You, you might have been the, you might have bookended that day, which I'm happy about. I, I appreciate that. So you goddamn right, Ray. I'm the only person who's going to wish you happy birthday because I'm the only freaking person who cares. All right. Birthdays, Ray, are important to me, especially yours, Aww. especially since you this don't like sweet. telling me when it is. And I had to I and I got it out of you and I said it and I said, happy birthday, buddy. Um, if I was if I was close by, I would I would snuggle you on your birthday. But Aww. I'm not. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's right. All right. Rich dot com for all your Rich Dickman needs. Call the Dickman line, 860-316-4776. Well, while you're at richdickman.com, by the way, click the merch tab. Go check out the shirts we're getting. Hey, um, we are selling those Eat the Rich shirts. Uh, they are selling like hotcakes. Supplies. Supplies are limited, Ray. Supplies are limited. So get yours immediately. Get yours now. You don't want to run out because it's 2020. This is an election year, and you need to show the world you want to eat rich people. Um, by the way... With the way things are going around the world, you may actually have to eat some rich people uh, or people. Um, just make sure they're not infected. This is – man, it's <laughs> – a couple months from now, it's going to be pretty scary. You know, That's I've right. heard uh, – I've rumor has it <laughs> – not from personal experience am I saying this, but I, like I said, rumor has it that if you are drinking a nice glass of bourbon, such as John E. Fitzgerald has done back in the day, it pairs well with a rich person. So maybe stock up on the two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, plan ahead. Uh, doomsday preppers, uh, prep for a reason. They like to be prepared and they like to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can eat the rich person prep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving along here, uh, Ray, I would like to reach out to all those people who reached out to me over the last week and offered me their words of support and encouragement after the, the trauma I went through last week. Mm -hmm. uh, here's an update on the situation. Uh, Mr. OC actually texted me at, uh, at 1203 this very morning wow. and told me why he was upset. And then I replied uh, very respectfully and said, oh, man. 
I, I wish you would have told me last week. <laughs> we we could have hashed this one out, but uh, I'm sorry <laughs> for you thinking I'm an asshole, I guess. Um, but hey, um, progress has been made. I went a week without my friend. Ray, you did a great job filling in for Mr. OC uh, last this past week. I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Now, do you think there's any possibility at all, the smallest, yeah. that during during the, the hiatus of, of communication, that he yeah. decided to actually listen to the podcast, heard no. Heard, no, 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 heard that and and uh, kept it secret, and that's what initiated no some of the contact. Is he? There is like, no so way because you, you know him. You know him it, like in real life. You've hung out. You know this is what I'm saying, right? You actually have met him, looked him in the eye. You know for yep. a fact how he is. Therefore, you're, so you're saying he literally draws such hard lines in the sand that as soon mm-hmm. as anyone even just says Patreon on their podcast, he essentially. I, do you done. think he stops the podcast right there and actually like just deletes it from his listening device? <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> and yes. he's done. He's done. Well, right. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, back in 2017, Chris Ossie and I went to a wrestling show in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We went to see WWE live. Okay. And he said, Hey, there's this podcast. You got to listen to it. It's brother love and some guy. And I'm like, Oh man, I don't want to listen to any more podcasts because I got too many as it is. And I don't have time. He's like, no, you have to listen to something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. And I said, all right, Chris Ossie, that's, that's what I'm going to do. So I downloaded the podcast. I listened to it on the way home from wrestling that night. All right. And so we would talk about this podcast because he loved the podcast. I love the podcast. It was a great wrestling podcast. It's a great show. And then one day they, uh, the host Conrad Thompson decided that they were going to open up a Patreon and Chris O.C. died from the mm-hmm. listenership of that podcast immediately. And he loved that show. He got me listening to that show and he was, he was dead. So that's how, how hard of a line he draws. So there's no way he's listening to this show. There's no way he's listened to this show at all since episode nine. Uh, he did say he was checking our Patreon page to see if I had deleted it. And I, I never did, obviously. Um, and so that's as far as he went, but he never listened. Yeah. See, that's fine. With, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to. Probably the most fascinating part about that is not that he actually yeah. draws such hard lines, but that he will, he will check the Patreon page to confirm mm. what someone says. So he's not just saying, you know what? I'm done with it. Maybe he will actually re-listen if someone deletes the, the, the Patreon or stops the Patreon. Maybe that's actually a possibility. Now he might have more leniency towards someone that's an actual in real life friend, as opposed to a podcast that he doesn't actually have any affiliation with. But do you think that's a possibility that he was actually, that he was saying, you know what? You said you were going to delete it. Let me go back and, and just check and see if you're, you're actually doing that. And then would have started yes. listening again. Yes. H- had the Patreon page been deleted, he would probably most likely have started listening again. Yes. So let's do this. Yep. We're going to release two versions of the episode. One, we mm-hmm. edit out any Patreon related content and you send it directly to him mm-hmm. and say, I love you so much as a friend. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm not even going to release. This is like the, the super awesome version. And then <laughs> you just release the Patreon version to everybody else. I think we, we've figured out a way around his, <laughs> we've had a loophole in the system. Uh, or alternatively, he cannot be such an asshole. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, All right. Ray, what's yeah. what, also a uh, shout out to my man, producer Ryan, uh, who, 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 uh, who, who texted me earlier this week. He said, yo, a couple things. And I'm like, Oh God, oh, what did I do? Now? <laughs> oh no. Right? Cause whenever says, wh- yeah, whenever somebody says, yo, a couple things, you're like, Oh shit. I'm like, what did I do? Right. Uh, but he was super positive. So like, you guys have been killing it in the pod lately and let's get together next month and let's uh, do some video content. So looking forward to that. And, and you know what? I, I haven't been able, I, I forgot to say this last week, but thank you to Jake Williams, two episodes ago, episode 90 for coming on, um, and talking to us. That was a lot of fun. Um, I haven't, I haven't heard from Jake since. <laughs> I uh, thought we were best friends, but whatever. Uh, you, oh, know, you know me, man. I get sensitive. Now it's yeah. probably not a good uh, time we, to tell you that we talk all all the time. Oh, God damn you, <laughs> Ray. God damn it. But we had, a, we had a great run of episodes in the 80s. So let's see what we can do in the 90s here as we approach 100. We might get more right, colorful Ray, in is, the 90s. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. What's, uh, what's going on with you, buddy? How you doing? Um, so... So here's what happened on my birthday because it's it's basically 
the, it was like the worst day. So woke up. Uh, yeah, you know, this is the worst. Well, so <laughs> I come better. into them. <laughs> yeah, right. Like they're, they're already bad because if, especially if you have expectations. And the, the reason why I don't actually tell people what my birthday is because I don't want people to know. So I have even lower expectations. And, and in spite of the fact that I saw my in-laws on that day and none of them said happy birthday because none of them even knew it was my birthday. Like that's how low key I keep my birthday. <laughs> right. I woke up that day. We had the cheerleading event. Love my kids. L- lo- you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not like mad about going to cheerleading. On the other hand, uh, woke up and was pretty much there the whole day. You know, woke up, get them ready. It's a whole, whole deal. Get to the place. We got there at like 10 o'clock. The kids don't even go until two o'clock and they combined between all their performances, five minutes is five, five minutes. Jesus fuck. What am I saying? Five minutes of five performances, minutes. <laughs> five minutes of performances yeah. combined. Like I, I'm there hours and you get five minutes and then, um, they have shitty food there. They literally had hot dogs and $10 smoothies. And I'm like, no, I'm not paying $10 for a smoothie. It's probably terrible. And you have like just nothing but hot dogs, $4 for a Gatorade. Like, I, like I, I, you want to talk about having principles? I'm not paying you $4 for a Gatorade when I can go anywhere else. A vending machine sells it for $2. Like anyway. Yeah. Yeah. These places are horrible, right? Everything about it. It's just, mm-hmm. you, you don't want to eat mm-hmm. there. Anything. So finally, they're like, okay, we're leaving. Get to do the awards show. And they say, we're going to meet. Uh, sorry, the group is not necessarily going, not the whole team's going anywhere to celebrate. Uh, just a few of us, just like, uh, two other families. We're going to go over to, uh, mod pizza. And I'm like, does anyone give a fuck what I want? I'm not saying that you need to bend over backwards for me, but I've literally been doing stuff for everyone else all day. Right. At some point I'm like, yeah, right. Like I have zero expectations, but I can't even pick what I want for dinner. And not that I hate mod pizza, but that's not necessarily what I'd want on my birthday. I want like a steak or something like that. It's something else. So anyway, we go over there and do that. And I'm just pissed off the rest of the night. And, and I just wanted to say it was a birthday. But like I said, you were the first person to say happy birthday that day. I appreciate it. And I, I believe I said you were the last person to wish me a birthday on that day. Um, which uh, I appreciate that you, that you did that twice. Uh, that was, that was very kind of you. Um, I know I'm a good friend until I'm not anymore. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Well, dude, and even like the day before, like my parents were, were on their way back through, through town and we're like, Hey, sorry, we can't actually stop by to take you out for birthday dinner. And then, you know, the next day, like two of my three siblings said happy birthday. Like, n- like nothing goes right. right? I mean, it's just, just yeah. I don't know, a shitty day. So the following day I went to the store, bought a couple of really nice ribeyes. And this is the best part about making steaks with my family is my kids are like, yeah, they're all right. And my wife's like, Oh, wow. You gave me a quarter of it. That's too much. So I basically like one and a half, one and three quarters ribeyes and didn't really eat much else because dude, I'll just gorge on ribeyes. And oh, so Monday was Mm. nice. The the day after my birthday. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Later in the show, I'm going to teach you how to reverse sear a steak because Ray apparently doesn't know how. Okay. No, I do. Now, here's here's what happens at cheerleading events that honestly is like probably one of the worst things. Fucking kids yeah. everywhere, right? Okay, yeah, so this is anywhere from age like five to fourteen or something like that. Now, tons and tons of kids. I can't stand the fact that parents never tell their kids, "Watch where you're going, look out for other people, just be aware of your surroundings." You know what kids do when you're walking in a straight line on the right side of the aisle? They all of a sudden just they cut in front of you. Respectfully get out of your way. Oh, absolutely no, and they'll be walking toward you. You know how many kids I ran into, like repeatedly. Six. And I always. <laughs> at least uh, okay so here you tell me what you do with your kids but this is what i do i say hey push them <laughs> down the stairs down the cement stairs <laughs> of the bleachers <laughs> so what i always tell like in a grocery store or something like that like if someone's i'm saying hey look out for the carts look out for the carts after i tell them twice i'll stop telling them and if someone runs in with a cart and my kid's crying i say tough shit i told you i warned you and you know what i'm saying like what am i gonna i can't watch them the whole my whole life like at some point they got to learn, right? So kind of the same thing there. I started off the day being all nice. And next thing I know, I'm hip checking all these little tiny, what are they? 25 pound cheerleaders. Yeah. Like you got to show I those like bastards. I, Get the hell I out of my way. Terrible. Oh, yeah. But uh, I mean, they got to learn, right? I, I mean, what, do, what would you, mm-hmm. what would you propose? 
You don't learn by being successful all the time, dude. You got to fail a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> you got to you got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Absolutely. So that was my one one birthday consolation. Hip checking little kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, let me that's let me give you some advice. Yeah. For your next birthday, buddy. Mm-hmm. Is that, um, actually, I don't have any advice to give you, man. I, I don't, you know, birthdays have gotten worse every year since I was 21. And it's to the point now where, like, my birthday this year was on Thanksgiving. Guess who made Thanksgiving dinner? Like, me. Uh, guess who was up at like, 7 a.m. Yeah, getting Thanksgiving right. shit together? Me. Guess who was, you know, going crazy because my gravy wasn't coming together? Me. And, and, and nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. And what do I get for presents, right? I don't get anything. I, nobody gets me. I, I, oh, yeah. What am I, I you know what I got? Do you want to know, know what I got? Kids. Yeah, what? Guess what I got for my family. You'll never guess. Um, yep. A an am- lunch. Amazon gift card. <laughs> no, a lunchbox. <laughs> a, a lunchbox. Yeah. I'm dead Jesus serious. Christ. Now, yeah. the one that I have is like 10 years old. It's it's gross, but I mean... They like, I don't even want anything route. for my birthday anymore because whoever gets me anything is just going to disappoint me, right? Because like I know what I want it, and right? I get it myself. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my family just got me like some Joe Robinette swag. Like I got a Joe Robinette hoodie and a hat and a t-shirt. And like, you know what? That's fucking rad. I love that. Yeah. Because I love yeah. Joe Robinette. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. Well, um, my, my dad got me like a $50 gift card to Home Depot. Now beggars can't be choosers and I'm very grateful. But what the hell am I doing at Home Depot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't do shit you know at home sell, Yeah, I know. It's like, well, you're like, shit, well, I don't necessarily like, need to do any home improvement. So I guess they sell like uh, hand soap and uh, toilet paper. So I stock up a $50 in toilet paper. So I don't have to go anywhere else to buy it. I guess, right? <laughs> I mean, what it's else not like a, I, I'm not going to go buy myself a toy at, at Home Depot to yeah, play with. Right? You know? <laughs> God damn, I don't need a hammer. I have two of them. So, uh, man, uh, maybe uh, that's yeah. not. Yeah. So there's got to be something at Home Depot, like some sort of Ray. We can buy that. Fuck with people. That's what we got to do. Let's, next let's year. Do some research. Yeah. Next year. Plan your plan your birthday. Get some sitters for the kids. I don't know. Two or three, whatever you need. And take, mm-hmm. you know what? For your birthday, take your wife out. That way you get a little bit of alone time, maybe in a hotel room or there's a casino, a big jacuzzi bathtub and, and just tell her how hot I think she is. Uh, and that would, is that appropriate? I'm sorry, Ray. Um, but, but that'll get you. At first I thought you slipped up. <laughs> and then I realized what you were actually saying. Like I for a not, moment, I, I thought you, slip yeah. up. that's pretty funny. Uh, that was a good one. <laughs> no, you know what I would sorry, like to do? I'm constantly, <laughs> no, that was actually, I like that. That was pretty funny. I'm like, I'm like wifey. So we're alone. <laughs> the mood is right. By the way, my yeah. podcast, <laughs> my podcast. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not, Ray. God damn it. You ruin everything. Ray, Ray, you're alone with your wife. You yeah. lay her down. Candles lit, right? You got some nice lavender scents or whatever the sexy smell is. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. And, I got, and it. I got, it. I got you, it. you take, you take some priority society advice and you, you light that goddamn hotel room up with, with like, some beautiful lights and you make your own little bar and shit. Maybe you're swinging. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're Rose not. Petals I don't know. Everywhere. And you say, and you say, mm-hmm. Hey, Mrs. Winfeld. Rem thinks you're fucking hot. Let's show him. And then you take the camera out and then you go to work. And then, <laughs> then you texted me as you go along. Say, I was like, God damn live right, I'm sorry. That is just live stream. Yeah. What the fuck? We're going to, we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to add some Patreon levels <laughs> for a thousand dollars a month. You can live yeah, stream. You get raised sex tape. Yeah. Live stream for yeah. for a hundred dollars a month, you get you get Ray's nude picture, and for a thousand dollars, you will get uh, you will get uh, what the hell uh, the live the live sex tape. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. that's enough. I'm sorry, Ray. Oh, I'm sorry, Ray. No, we'll do the. <sighs> so we we got to add. I think like for the hundred dollars, we could do that the cowboy with the cowboy hat picture, naked with the cowboy. Hat. Yeah, we could add that one in there. Right. I would. I, I mean, would I'll, I'll send. One. I'll fire dick pics off for fifty bucks. I don't give a shit. You know, I, I got I got enough to show. Right? Maybe I'll have to lower the cowboy cowboy hat window like thirty. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta, we're, why are we gonna, you know, if, Why are if, we outbidding each other? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't considered sexual assault, I'd really love one of these porn stars like to judge our penises and tell us who has the better one. I think that's that'd be fun. If it's consent, that'd be fun. I mean, right. is it is it is it some sort of? I think we could, I think we could make it. 
So you know what? Hey, Svensson's here. So hold on, Ray. I got to plug our chat room. Yeah. A bit dot do slash trds one will get you into our Discord, and you can join this live. Uh, don't forget to download the show, you guys, in the chat room. Thank you very much. All right, go ahead, Ray. I forget what I was going to say. All I'm seeing is Randy okay. saying that uh, when we get to a thousand dollars a month on the Patreon, then the sex tape would happen. But that's a apparently Rem's making it, a sex tape with your wife at a thousand. Huh. Yeah, but it's a You're right. That's no, not a part a, of the job. All it, that's not a total thousand dollars a month. Yeah, all part of the job. Yeah. I'll take one for the team. Yeah. But that's mm-hmm. the individual thousand dollars a month. I mean, this is this stuff. This is like real bonus content. It, it, yeah, you know, so, oh, this is the bonuses of content. Like, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's not really m- much oh. more we could go above that. I don't know if there's many yeah. other crazier things that we. I mean, what are we gonna have? Some ten thousand dollar one? Maybe that's a. You know what? That's a. That's a, you and me and our wives swinging. Yeah. That would be the. No. 10, you leave my family out of this, right? They don't get involved. <laughs> There, yeah. your, your wife's a, cl- a classy lady. She doesn't need to be involved. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. She's such a nice. Sometimes, maybe yeah. you've seen the text messages. Yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, nice. What else you got? You got anything else? Because I'm about to, I'm about to go on a tirade of complaining. Okay, well, let me do one more. This is kind of interesting. So, got the baby, Oliver, little guy. So, okay, my first two kids, you just swallow them, right? You put their arms down, you swallow them in the blanket, you go and put them to sleep. They sleep fine. Now, apparently, between then and now, a couple of years, they've developed, I don't know what the fuck it's called, other than it's a flying squirrel baby outfit. Okay. So instead of the arms being down, apparently babies can't sleep with their arms down. I'm like, bullshit. I got two fucking kids that did it just fine. But they do this thing where like, okay, imagine putting your hands, palms out next to your ears and your elbows kind of go out. You know what I mean? It's like these little pockets in this little like onesie, but it's it's like a straight jacket slash flying squirrel outfit. And apparently they have almost like have to sleep it's like a, that. Isn't that crazy? Sleep sack, right? Yeah, but their arms I, I are like almost up. Isn't that weird? I don't know what it's like to have a baby. It's been so long. So I don't know what you're talking mm, about. I guess that's true, huh? How long has yeah, it been? Arms like, have to uh, go up. A few years. My <laughs> son, when when my son was a baby, he did sleep with his arms up like Without us even doing anything, his arms just went up. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah. if you put them d- okay, so we would have like my my girls, they'd scratch their faces and you know just just grab at stuff, and they wake up all the time. So it, it just seems it feels like I'm putting the kid in a straight jacket, but he looks mm-hmm. like a flying squirrel. So on the one hand, I'm like, this is torture. On the other <laughs> hand, I'm like, could this kid fly? Like, is this supposed to train him for something? Like, what is happening right now? I I'm so confused yeah. by this thing. And where do people come up with these things? Who, what's, first of all, who gets paid to do this? Who does the research on this? I want to meet these people. Can we, let's, let's, try, I'm going to look for them. I'm going to get them on the podcast. That's what I'm going to do. Cause these, the, the, you know what I love about your, your, your little, your little baby, your son. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's adorable, by the way, but he has a permanent tan, which is great. He's got a great skin tone. No, he doesn't. He's actually hella white. The girls are the ones. That what are you actually- talking about? The picture you sent me the other day. He was. He was. He was. Uh, he had a. He had a great he, tan. Yeah. He had well, your wife's skin. <laughs> no, n- not not as much as the girls. They are tan. No, when you yeah put, put them out in the sun, like they're they're like little fishes in the pool, right? And then they get that funny little underwear tan, like the bathing suit tan. Like holy smokes, night and day is literally on their body night and day. You, this is, this is the crazy part about mixing races. This is like the, the <laughs> white in me and the Hispanic in her. They tan so fucking fast. I'm jealous and it's bullshit that they get the awesome. good skin parts and I'm still white as fuck. I'm like a fucking piece mm. of printer paper. It's not fair. Yeah. You're, you're a white piece of shit. That's what uh, you are. Yeah. It's not fair. You, it, it, you're a male fix and you're white. You're the worst. You're the, well, you have to identify something else. That's how you fix it. Like you have to make sure you're that 25% of Chinese. Well, actually it's probably not a good idea to be Chinese these days. No. Yeah. That's, that's a bad one. Yeah. I, I, I'll identify as black. Yeah. I like black. I like Snoop Dogg. I was listening to a lot of, a lot of more like a old school rap and hip hop. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that either. Race. You just, just stop. Like, I'd rather do that than, who you are. than be Chinese. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. you have yeah, to identify yeah. as a woman. That's, you, you got to be a trans, uh, trans woman. 
Mm, All right. Do I have to? Uh, no, I don't want to be I, like I. I'd, I'd rather be what I like. All right. <laughs> Right, Svensson sounds to stop with the racist crap. Right. But Svensson, I'm saying I'd I rather I I stop like being a racist, Ray. Yeah, I'm saying I want the good I want the good stuff. I don't want to be the bad stuff. I'm just telling you, <laughs> be proud of who you are, bro. Just be proud yeah. of who you are. All yeah. right, all right, yeah. very good. Squirrel babies, cool, mm -hmm. good stuff. It's good, it's good stuff. Happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday. So, um, all right, so what, later what in the show. Friends? Well, later in the show, we're going to do some Super Bowl prop bets. Okay. And uh, by the time you hear this, the Super Bowl, well, no, this will this will come out before the Super Bowl. But most of you will probably listen to it after the Super Bowl. Uh, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I've always well, the good, to do something like the that. good okay. part is it'll be released beforehand, so people know that we're not hedging our bets or doing it after the fact. Like it'll all be out there, That's so true. they know we're not just making up stuff after the fact and, and making ourselves look good. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. really get up good on your microphone, buddy, because I can barely hear you. Get your what? face right into that thing. There you go. That's better. All right. No, um, no. Now, number one, uh, this this past Sunday, we lost uh, Kobe Bryant. Could rest his soul. He died in a horrible, a horrific helicopter crash with with uh, eight other people on board. His thirteen year old daughter and a coach of the basketball team, and uh, it's terrible. It's a terrible yeah, tragedy. It's, it's sad. It is. Yeah, it's it's just it's you know it sucks, right? No matter what you think about Kobe, um, there are other people involved, and they are no longer with them, and their families are hurting and grieving right now, and that stuff that that blows. And I'm really sorry for the families. Oh yeah, and I mean that. Like I know it just sounded like I was being sarcastic. I'm not. That it really does suck. Have you know having kids myself? I couldn't imagine. Well, life know, is precious one of them. for real. Like yeah, in all honesty, absolutely. Like life is, so we haven't got one of them. <laughs> Right. And one of the things I want to do in this podcast, Ray, is, is limit the interruptions as uh, some other podcasts that I've listened to are nonstop interruptions. So when you do mm -hmm. that shit to me, you're going to piss me off. So let me get my, <laughs> <All right. laughs> let me get my thought out. God damn it. <laughs> um, I, I don't even know where I was anymore. Um, yeah. So, so losing, losing lives is, is, is sucks. Right. And there's families that are hurting and it's a real thing. People, people die and it sucks. Right. But, People also die every day, and a lot of times, um, to, to cope with that loss, we people make jokes, right? People will make jokes about it. I offered a picture of my penis-shaped bread uh, in tribute to Kobe Bryant on Twitter. Uh, that's what I did. I I made bread last week, and it's shaped like a penis. And I posted a picture in memory of Kobe. I'm sure oh, he I had a large penis. Heartfelt, yeah. yeah. but. <laughs> um, you know, Kobe Bryant also had a, a spotty history. Uh, he was accused of, of rape back in, I think it was 2003. And just judging on, you know, our, our recent history of people accused of people being credibly accused of sexual assault, though with no proof, um, you have to believe everything now, right? Cause that's where we're at in society. We have to believe everybody and every accusation all the time, no matter what, right? So. Is I guess Kobe. I guess we have to know that Kobe's a rapist. But wait a second, uh, Cody. Kobe was beloved by lots of people, um, mm -hmm. so he's he's not a rapist. So we don't have to believe the accusations against him. I don't know, Ray. I am super confused. I'm super confused about it all. Um, yeah. Did he cheat on his wife? Maybe. Um, that's a personal decision. I don't know that you can judge people on that one either. Uh, but again, um, if I'm very confused, do we believe? All accusers, or do we only believe the accusers of the people uh, who are accusing that people we don't like? Okay. Well, now that yeah. that 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 aside, the other the other thing happening here is that you know being in the age that we're in, and that social media is everywhere, and that people like to get on social media and say lots of funny things, uh, or bad things, or neat things, or smart things, or or whatever it is. Um, you know, people are making jokes about Kobe, um, either bringing up the fact that he was a rapist or just bringing, making a joke together because that's how people cope. They make jokes, right? And mm -hmm. uh, apparently we're not allowed to joke about Kobe Bryant's death because he was, again, he's beloved by millions of people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so joking about Kobe Bryant's death is not appropriate. Now, however, I have to imagine that, um, if people that we didn't like were to perish in some, some, some sort of way, I don't know. Let's say, let's say the president or current president, Donald Trump were to pass away 
in some horrific helicopter accident. Um, there would, there would literally be millions upon millions of people, uh, <laughs> Rejoice. There would be parades on their, there would actually be their parades. social media of choice. Okay. Um, th- this isn't an endorsement of anything. This is just me being very confused yeah. at where oh, we are true. with society these days is that we can cheer the death of some people, but we have to mourn the death of others and none, the same rules don't apply to both sides. Um, and it's very confusing to me and I don't like it, Ray. It is. I don't it like is. it. I didn't yeah, Go ahead, buddy. Well, you're you're right. The there is obviously some sort of discrepancy between who we can and can't make fun of, apparently. Because for example, I'm at the cheerleading competition. We park in the parking garage, I walk out, and this is at UC Davis, right? Um, it's a, a college campus, a very well known, respected college campus. There it's I don't know how many people really know of UC Davis, but it's a large like I said, well respected campus. So Walking out of the parking garage, look over to the side where there's a sign, and someone had put a in the in the parking garage the a sticker that says "fuck Trump," and it, it looked like it had been there a while. It's a little bit worn out, and I'm thinking, which what is if their I had right, a, by the way, under the First Amendment. You know, you can uh, say all the terrible things you want to say, but it's a sticker on top of signage for the parking garage. It's true. Yep. So, but I'm all I'm thinking is, what if I put like a "fuck Obama" sticker up there? Do you, how long do you think You're that lasts? You know what I'm saying, right? Not like, at all. I'm yeah. just saying people would say you can't do that. You're horrible and would attack you. And I mean, Obama, charismatic, seems like a wonderful guy. But I mean, not everyone likes everybody. There's going to be people to disagree with them. Uh, just saying <laughs> there's two sides. Like, not everyone agrees, right? That's just a fact. So why would it be OK to put something that says fuck anybody on a sticker anywhere in public where normally that's that's was that graffiti type of a you know what i'm saying that's defacing property like yeah in general uh, i get it yeah um the the rules have to be the same for both yes. either we can make fun of people or we can't make fun of people it can't be you can make fun of some people but you can't make fun of others it's the same for both or else it's none at all right and yeah. that double standard that we have right now uh just drives me insane um, be honest with yourselves, everybody. Uh, if you, if you don't like somebody, um, that's cool. No problem. You are, you are able to like and dislike whoever you want. That's what's great about this country. We have that first amendment and you can, you can say all the stupid shit you want in the world. I don't have to agree with it, but I respect your right to say it. Um, but the rules have to apply the same for both sides. You can't say, oh, you can't make fun of his death, but while, you know, wishing for the death of somebody else, that, that just doesn't make sense. It just makes you intellectual, intellectually dishonest. Yeah. And it just, just to see this play out the way it did over the weekend was just insane. It's just kind of like a microcosm of where we are as a society right now. And it's just, it's so confusing and just so weird. Um, you don't like Trump. You don't like Obama. That's cool. You're entitled Nobody to your says you have to like either of them. Yeah. Um, but you know, if, if you're going to be mad at people for making fun of Obama, but encouraging people to make fun of Trump, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, you should be able to make fun of both of them. Yeah. At the same well, time. The, yeah. the, the, one of the first things I thought of when Kobe Bryant passed, because, okay, so here, here's, uh, I might be a little bit biased being a Boston Celtics fan, but, so, so, you know, obviously hate the Lakers, generally speaking. And regardless of that, I, you know, I, I obviously have a uh, negative opinion of Kobe Bryant just in general because of that. But I can respect that he was an amazing athlete, uh, incredible uh, competitor. I mean, the, the guy, Mamba mentality, right? Like everyone says that. Um, but then I think of, well, yeah, accused of rape. You, you've got that, that, you know, floating around in the back there. Obviously, but that was, uh, what was that, 17 years ago or so? I mean, uh, in relative terms, quite a while ago. Now, mm-hmm. what I remember when someone like uh, Michael Jackson, right? All, all I remember yeah. is people making jokes. Him, Wonderland, kids. And I'm thinking, wasn't he beloved? Like, I know so many people. Like, Michael Jackson, d- a couple decades ago, was was everyone wanted to be him. You know what I mean? Like, he... I almost relate the two together as far as stardom and popularity and impact on, on culture. I mean, you're just, they're 
beloved. And then something at some point happened. Now I would say it was kind of a little bit reverse in that Kobe Bryant in his earlier years had the incident and then went on to still do great things. Whereas Michael Jackson kind of was started out great and uh, ended poorly. But don't, regardless, don't he did great but, things up to the end. <laughs> but regardless, you're, you're talking about uh, beloved with a little bit of a spotty past. So how come one you can make fun of and all it is is never landing kids and ha ha. Let's make fun of that. But the other one, you can't bring up anything you know about what, the Ray? rape aspect. Like, Fuck yeah, it. I'm, I'm, just gonna get, I'm just gonna get political here. I'm gonna get political. All right. The, the last, the last uh, Supreme Court justice to be, to be confirmed, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, he was quote unquote credibly accused of sexual assault from 30 something years ago, but the person had no proof, no memory. Uh, nobody else recalled anything. True. Uh, any, yeah. Everything else was kind of yeah, like there's, there's, they're saying mm-hmm. it's credibly, but there's nothing credible about the accusation. Um, Whereas uh, we're not supposed to talk about Kobe Bryant buying himself out of a rape conviction because he's a good humanitarian. I, I, it, it, just, it doesn't it doesn't line up to me. Now, people will say, oh, I'll get texts or tweets and say, oh, Brett Kavanaugh was credibly accused. And know, here's the evidence, all that shit. It's like, OK, cool. That's fine. If that's the case, um, and then law enforcement failed to do their job. And I'm sorry, it sucks. Um, but let's talk. Can we can we talk honestly about the Kobe Bryant rape case? A lot of evidence from, <laughs> from a little more recently. You know, <laughs> it's you can't you can't pick and choose on these things. It's kind of it's kind of the point I'm trying to make. And yeah. Just, and then seeing all these people yeah. tweet about, oh, you know, Kobe was an inspiration. Man, come on. Was he? Uh, listen, he was a basketball player. He's a great basketball player. Don't get me wrong. You know, a legendary basketball player, you know, likes of which, you know, you don't see very often. Um, But um, did 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 he come in and, you know, by a Big Mac? You know, what did he do? He just played basketball and yelled at his teammates well, and inspired you to be better. I mean, well, that's the other thing that cracks me up. OK, so I usually usually use Bleacher Report as my just go to sports app because they they pull stuff in from other other apps, uh, other other sports media uh, avenues and things like that. So they kind of bring it all together. And that's just like one one quick uh, stop. I got all, all I need. So I go through there, right? Scrolling. And it's literally Kobe Bryant tribute. Kobe Bryant tribute, Kobe Bryant tribute yeah. over and over and over again. And I'm thinking, okay, and then it's a- so-and-so post this, so-and-so post that they're, they're heartbroken. They don't know how to act. And, and the comments are still, I still don't know how to act. I still don't know what to do. I'm, I'm still torn by this. And I'm thinking, okay, I get it. He was influential. Yes. People want to be like Kobe. What? Like everyone that ever crumples up a ball of paper and throws it a trash can and yells Kobe. I get it. But did he really affect you that much? I love there's there's I could name dozens of movies that I love like Super Troopers. One of my favorite movies of all time. It's hysterical. One liner after one liner. If one of those guys passes away, I'm not going to come back to you and say, I I don't know what to do with my life. Like, I, I, I have no idea where to go from here. Like, what what are we doing here? Why these people that never had any significant relationship with him or all of a sudden heartbroken. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I understand you, coming you to can, an end. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it just seems disproportional to their relationship with him. Yeah. Not everyone. Could, there's only so many hours that Kobe Bryant was alive. Not everyone could have been his best friend. Yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> right. I live, I live in Connecticut. I've been driving to new Haven every day this week and there's a billboard on, on route 95, I 95 going towards new Haven uh, in tribute to Kobe Bryant legend. 1978 to 2020 with his picture mm-hmm. on it. Like what, what, what? Everyone just trying to one up because, one another. To slow because his music. daughter was going to go to Yukon in a couple of years. I mean, come on. <laughs> they wanted that yeah. Kobe Bryant money True in, in Yukon. <laughs> Anyways, everything's stupid. Everybody's dumb and social media has made it even worse. Uh, all right. That's enough of that. If you disagree with us, rich at gmail.com or eight six zero three one six four seven seven six. Tell us why uh, Kobe Bryant is, is a legend and uh, should be remembered fondly. And Absolutely. we should all be sad that he's dead. And I'm I miss sad him that his wife, you know, his wife now you know, is missing a husband and a daughter. And that fucking sucks. And the families, you know, who are, who are there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the families involved. It's all terrible. It's terrible. But I mean, enough with the virtue signaling. Okay. Um, oh, God. We got to get Svensson on the show. I'm yes. sorry. Svensson's in our chat room. And I, I asked him who his favorite adult film stars were. And um, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So Ray, um, you know, we famously have discussed, uh, the, the company, uh, McDonald's on this show. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I am, I am a fan of McDonald's, right? Uh, but not as much as I used to be because I'm older now and, and I can't, um, I can't indulge like I used to, right? Uh, I just can't, you know, your body changes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, I was at McDonald's, uh, the, um, was it Sunday? Sunday morning. And in the family, the kids wanted uh, donut sticks. They have donut sticks on the breakfast menu now. Okay, and go to the go to the drive-through window and said hello. And then they say hi. Well, can I help you? And I'm like, I would like two twelve pieces, two twelve piece donut sticks, please. Also, I would like two large coffees and a bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. All right, <laughs> for yourself. So we go around. Yeah, that's for me, for my drive home. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I grab my order off the drive through and I get home. And oddly enough, I had used a coupon, uh, to make one of the coffees 99 cents. And <laughs> the total before, yeah, the total before using the coupon was $15 even. After using the coupon, it was 1540. Somehow, what? somehow my 99 yeah. cent coupon <laughs> increased the total 40 cents. I don't know how that happened. Um, but, uh, wow. anyways, I, I get home and there's only, there's two six piece donut sticks, not two 12 piece, two six piece, right? Uh-huh. So I'm like, oh, God damn it. Right. Like, Jesus, so like, you really, it, the receipt, math the is receipt hard. Okay. says two 12 piece, right? <laughs> Reading is hard too. $7. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So I had to go back. I had to go back to McDonald's. I had to drive back because God damn it. I'm not letting them get away with this. I'm getting well, my goddamn other six pieces. Uh, it, it's about a, it's an 11 minute ride from my house. Okay. So that's so a little bit. I drove effort. 11 minutes there, 11 minutes back and I had to go 11 minutes back to get the rest of my goddamn donut sticks. Okay. And I walk up to the counter and I show them where she says, Hey, you know, I, I ordered two 12 pieces. I only got two six pieces. I'm like, Oh, so you need to get another, you need another, <laughs> another six, right? I'm like, yeah. What? <laughs> another 12, another two, another two, whatever the math ends up being. I don't know, right? Another 12, another two. I don't know, but whatever. They were really cool and they gave it to me and that's fine. Right. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but the problem I have now, Ray, is that the McDonald's job is going to be a job that we're going to have to pay $15 an hour to. I mean, that's I don't have to pay right. $15 an hour to. I will in, in the prices, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. The, well, the yeah. prices go up, but, but this is a job that's going to be paid $15 an hour, which is $30,000 a year, which, um, I mean, not in Connecticut, but in a lot of other places, you can, you can live a good life off of 30, $35,000 a yeah. year, right? Up yeah. here, that's, that's barely making it. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be, it's a, it's no longer going to be a stepping stone, right? McDonald's should be a stepping stone. You, you, unless you're going into management, unless you're owning a franchise at McDonald's, you should go into McDonald's, work there for a little bit, pay off your college or your community school, whatever you're doing, and then move on to something better. You should, it oh, should not definitely. be, you know, that should not be your permanent job. I, I and if it agree. is going to be your permanent job, if McDonald's is going to be the work, the job you do for 30 years till your retirement, uh, please, dear God, please learn how to read the goddamn order. If it says two 12 piece donut sticks, put two 12 pieces of donut sticks in the goddamn bag. Why, why are we even just trying to pretend here? Uh, we're not Ray, you know, I get unreasonably pissed off at things. This is one I'm unreasonably pissed off. Yeah. I've got an idea. Name? We government fund this. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's just like government funded, but uh, get the government involved and here's what we do mm-hmm. uh, because, or, or maybe, maybe some private sector. Um, but what you do is, we get whatever conglomerate it is to have some sort of oversight into the performance of people there. And it's, you just use it as like a filtration system. So if the person's working at McDonald's and they can't tell you, they, they're like six, 12, I don't know the difference. Here you go. Well, then, then when they start applying for jobs, you, you reach out to the employers they're applying to and you, you slip that in. Like, hey, here's how many orders they mess up at McDonald's. You know what I mean? And and if they're yeah. like, wow, that person messed up 238 orders at McDonald's in they only worked there 90 days. Well, yeah, uh, I'm not going to hire them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> why don't we do something like that? Like a, a track record of accuracy of orders and just a how did they perform at McDonald's? 
Were they an outstanding performer that you say, you know what, they are definitely destined for more? Or you say, you know what, you're not cutting it. You're going to have to work at Taco Bell now. You know, it sounds like you're talking about China's uh, social credit system, which the way you describe it, it, I'm kind of. I'm kind of on board. I'm kind of on board with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. we need performance reviews outside of uh, management. Who's too afraid to fire anybody in case of, uh, you know, uh, discrimination or EEO lawsuits? Because, that's <laughs> a, you know, we're a, litiga- a litigious society. Um, Randy, Randy's saying uh, it's funny how the billionaires are great at getting middle class to hate on minimum wage workers. Um, I don't hate on minimum wage workers. Like, like if you have a job – um, I'm happy for you and I'm proud of you that you have a job and you are working. I, my feeling is that McDonald's should not be your job for life. McDonald's is a stepping stone job, right? You should, yeah, you should you hit should. that McDonald's, uh, McDonald's should not that, be your goal that, in they, life. That should not be yeah, your like, like end game. Holy smokes. If you're working at McDonald's, your goal should be to move on to something better or to own the goddamn McDonald's, right? Not to just sit there and take somebody's orders and get it wrong all the time. So, so um, all I want I, is people to to do their jobs well and have a little bit of pride in it. That's all. I don't want to have to take another twenty two minute drive just to get the rest of my goddamn donut sticks. So I I interviewed someone on Saturday. How the fucking going to work on Saturday? Like who the fuck sets up interviews on Saturday? But interviewed this person right, earned their degree. It's been nine months since they graduated. And on the one hand, I go, hmm, how come you don't have like a, you know, like what why, why are you looking for this position? It's more like an uh, like an office receptionist ad- administrator uh, position, not necessarily like high paying, like you know, definitely not your. I got my degree, looking for my dream job, but I'm think I'm looking at what they with the place they worked, and it's like uh, you know, just just a job, kind of like McDonald's, you know, pays pays a few bucks an hour, but you're, never your end game, you know, like teacher's assistant, that kind of thing. And all I'm thinking is, all right, let's see what they've got to offer. And you know what they did? They came back and asked me and, and uh, the other person interviewing the, in the uh, room there. They had like half a dozen solid questions for us. And then we go and we look up, uh, all right, done with the interview. Go look them up on social media. You know what they did? They're posting stuff like, hey, I'd love to get a job. You know, it's kind of frustrating having a degree like, and, and not being able to get, get a job and get in the workforce. And I'm thinking this person's motivated, right? They're, they're looking at their end game is way bigger. Why can't we get more people like that? Those are the people we need to find. The person that's there at McDonald's kind of like, ah, fuck it. I work at McDonald's. Yeah. I don't want to hire that person. Screw that person. They're terrible. Oh, you know what I mean? They're happy. We don't being. do a good job of encouraging people to get better. You know, we, we, everybody gets, gets happy and, uh, and they get, um, satisfied. True. That's oh, that's, I'm looking dude, for. I live around fucking a, bunch yeah. of them i live around a ton of them they're like just happy, happy where oh, they're at i have a great apartment on the water and i only pay 500 bucks a month for it i don't need a better job you know no, you should mm-hmm. always be trying to get better okay we got to keep moving though we're, we're running yeah, behind here um it, that's just me complaining about mcdonald's listen uh very quickly um you can make a lot of money you can make a ton of money if you are a mcdonald's franchisee and you had that place in tip top shape where oh. it was clean. The bathrooms were immaculate, that the yes. orders were never wrong and that service was exceptional. You would make a mint if you just had that McDonald's that did that. Yep. Don't I've care. said the same thing. I, we've talked about it before. Panda Express. Why the fuck is one person in the drive through taking the orders, taking the money, scooping the food? You, you're, you're clearing th- like a third of the amount of cars you clear. Like it doesn't I mean, make any sense. Uh, uh, it's As a person sense. of Chinese descent, why are you why are you at Pen Express? But uh, this is the voicemail bumper. <laughs> this is the bumper on your left, and this is the bumper on your right. This is a bad guitar kind of riff. And finally, here's your voicemails. Sorry, Do the guitar riff's too cool not to play twice. All right, so before I play this voicemail, I, I sent out a tweet the other day. And I hashtagged the coronavirus and the corona outbreak and say, Hey, I want <laughs> I want to hear your thoughts. And I got a random caller, so here it is. Nice. Hi. Um, my name is Mike. I'm from Chicago. I lived in China for a couple of years. Uh, I was scrolling through Twitter, looking at the uh, coronavirus hashtags, and I found a number for your show. I figured I'd call and um, give you some insights. I, I've i traveled in China through taking buses and trains, and the run-up to Spring Festival, which happened on the 
uh, what was it, the 25th this year. Um, doesn't matter, but the... It does to um, me. I'm Chinese. The sanitary conditions of the majority <laughs> of the trips which people take, they'll take overnight trains or they'll take uh, overnight buses. The conditions are horrendous, and usually the trains, the buses, the planes are all crammed with people. So, so you could have uh, a single person spread the coronavirus to a number of people um, in the course of five hours getting on an overnight train. And a lot of times, let, let's say you take, you take the train from Wuhan to Beijing to get home or to some I love that route. Uh, somebody with the virus could have been on the train for 12 and a half hours in a sleeper car and have transmitted it to tens of people. And then mm-hmm. those tens, and then it just spreads like the, the issues that arise from the timing of the virus and just the poor sanitary conditions and the crowded conditions by which uh, Chinese people travel during Spring Festival are really a recipe for disaster. And people just, that's one thing that unless you've lived in China or traveled there, you really oh, don't Chinese. see. Um, and it's, mm-hmm. it's really just horrendous sanitary conditions uh, when people leave the cities. And any major city, any top 10 populated city in China which Wuhan is included, is essentially a ghost city during Spring Festival. So a significant number of the infected people on the run-up to Spring Festival probably left the city, and they usually take some form of public transportation. So this uh, epidemic is going to be... It's going to be unfolding significantly, and we have no idea how, and it's just a matter of time. We just have to wait for it. Well, hope that was insightful. I kind of rambled, but... Oh, you got cut off, but thank (laughs) you, Mike. Thank you so much uh, (laughs) for your insights there. Listen, uh, just today... Just today, the, the World Health Organization declared this a, uh, a worldwide emergency. Uh, this, this Wuhan, uh, flu, this coronavirus. Um, uh, Ray, where were you when the end of the world began? I was on my couch. <laughs> uh, I was probably the same. I mean, the end of the world is all the time. If you just go on Twitter <laughs> anytime, you literally open up Twitter. Oh, end of the world. Man. This whole thing, you've got some people saying, like my mother saying, uh, and, uh, and, uh, some other people tweeted, like, it's just the flu. It's not a big deal. Right. And then you have, you have, you have 40, 50 million people quarantined. You have 10,000 cases. You have 153 deaths, which I don't know. Thousands of people die from the flu every day. I get that. But the way this thing is spreading, the way the cases rise every day, um, the way it shows up in different parts of the world, uh, right now, uh, it's in, it's, it, they just had, uh, human, human contact in Chicago and it's in Randy's backyard. And Ray, I think you have something in Orange County and there's one up in Portland. There's like five or six cases here in the States. Right, um, right. Just what this guy is describing is because China is so densely populated. It's like over 1.3 billion people or whatever it is in China. Mm -hmm. Um, Like this isn't something really to laugh at. All right. This is kind of all of our worst nightmares and horror films starting to come to life. Um, And plus it's China. You don't know what's really going on in China. You're only going to know what the government's telling you. And like they're shutting internet down. They're prohibiting people from posting what's really happening. Sometimes they get out. Like, um, I've read reports of them just burning bodies without reporting them. Well, that's if you're burning bodies and you only have 123 people who are dead. Um, where are those bodies coming from? And there's probably more than 123 people dead from this thing, right? You know, thankfully, uh, you know, the rest of the world is pretty civilized and we probably can fight a lot of this. Okay. But, um, the second it's getting out of control, Ray, scary, and it's not, scary. it's not, this isn't, this isn't joke times. This is like serious shit right now. Yeah. No, it really is. Um, 
I mean, I, I'm getting more and more afraid because, uh, you know, if I'm 25% Chinese, am I like 25% more susceptible? Like, ooh. Uh, or, or, yeah. I, or is the white in me make me 75% more likely to not catch it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm banking on the 75%. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, this is, if, if we're not allowed to joke about things on Twitter, this is one of those things we shouldn't joke about, right? <laughs> But this is, this is too much fun to joke about. I have you know, they got the Corona memes. What, what's, what's the, what's the cure for the coronavirus? Oh, two limes. Hey, come on, shut the hell up. Yeah. Um, but no, this is, this is like, you know, all, all the zombie movies that you see. Uh, this is how it starts, man. You get a, you get a global pandemic and a bunch of people die and those people die. They ray rise from the dead. And if you don't let the, the zombies, you know, feast on your brains, you're a racist. Um, I've seen that too. Saying the Chinese people eat bat soup, which they think, you know, this came from eating animals. Um, people are saying, well, it's racist to claim that the Chinese people eat bat soup. No, it's not. That's uh, just stating a fact. Uh, people Picture. all over Asia love eating There's bat soup. They just so happened. Yeah. They just so happen to have infected bats in the Wuhan province. Also of note, if you didn't know this, Ray, you'll know this now. Um, in Wuhan, uh, there is a biological laboratory that uh, does research on the world's greatest biological threats. So who's to say wow. that this wasn't some sort of thing that was being worked on to get those people in Hong Kong back under control that may have just slipped out of the laboratory. What was that Stephen King book? The It was called the something, not the happening, the, the one with the virus spreads. It's like that. Outbreak? No. Yeah. It's, it's going to be. I don't know. Shitty I've pop. played enough Sorry. of Plague Incorporated to know that if you start a virus in China, you will infect the whole world. Really? What's that? I, what's Plague Incorporated? Some game? Plague Inc. Yeah, it's a game. Just look up on your Google Play Store. Plague Inc. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. So what do you yeah. do? Like you Are you trying to like you, infect the world you to, or are you trying to stop yeah, it? The, the, the end game is infecting the entire world and killing everybody. Right. So you have to start the virus and the type of virus in the exact right spot for it to happen. So this is where it all and if started. you put it in China. Yeah. yeah. If you put it in China, you'll probably, you'll most likely win the game because there's so many people and so much coming out of China. And, and wow. also, uh, you know, reports are now saying that, you know, the first, the first human to human cases weren't just recently. They were back in September and uh, China has been keeping this under control. Um, man, it is, I would hate to be in China right now. Yeah, I'm glad my family moved over here a couple of years ago. When you know, because yeah. uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no, I have no, I don't know. I, so th- what sucks for like, yes, we should uh, absolutely be vigilant and not put ourselves in bad situations where it's going to c- continue to spread. On the other hand, like, what am I going to do? Right? Like, I gotta, I'm just going to go to work. Like, I'm not going to fucking make a big difference. I'm not going to go out on the street and be like, hey, everybody. Uh, look out for your coronavirus. Like, so I don't, I don't really know what we're supposed to do other than, uh, just continue doing what I do. Like I'll wear my mask, I guess my, you know, my, my government issued, uh, face mask that wear the Asians wear <laughs> and hopefully not, not infect anybody else. We do get one of those. As soon as you learn that you're Chinese, they give you one of those little masks, uh, for whenever you're sick, by the way, as soon as I learned that I was Chinese, they actually mailed me, uh, like a. Uh, they, you get little care packages. They actually just show up, uh, uh, like on, like on auto order through Amazon. They just get like, uh, 20, 24 of them, uh, packs every month, just in case. I'm going to whole stack of them here. If anybody wants them, did you cut out again? I don't know. I was making a great point, Ray, and then my microphone cut out and I'm having lots of audio problems. So this is going to be a great episode and I'm in an awesome mood now. So, all right, let's move on to something else. Just think of it like this. Ready? We are unintentionally recording so much bonus content glass f full boom yeah but what's we're next we're just gonna Profits? take recording and put that right on patreon.com slash rich dickman yeah hey guys it's time for the thinking with your dickman segment send in your questions and we'll give you some advice for example i was told the recording oh great the bumper's not playing sound quality so here i am can you hear yeah, it i can hear it yeah i can hear it yeah what are you doing in here um Maybe we'll added in post. give you better advice than God. what that homeless guy gave me. God damn it. All right, Ray. So we're going to do some thinking with your dick, man. We've got the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. the Superb Owl coming up in two days between the 49ers and the Chiefs, the San Francisco 49ers, the Kansas City Chiefs. 
and we are going to do some prop bets. Um, mm. What do we what do we win here, Ray? If, who wins? Who who? What do we? Uh, what do, what's what are we playing for? Or do you have Super Bowl? What do you want to do here? This is your segment, Ray. Ooh, all all I know is I brought the actual uh, bets and lines, if you will. The the so we can decide what we want to wager. Now, if you want, we can just go head to head on all these because. If you're talking money lines and all that business, it gets pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, slap bets. Have you ever seen the water bets? Water bet. That's, that's the way to go. I don't know what that is, Ray. So go yeah. ahead and, and hit me. Hit me all with right. bets. Well, so we'll, how about we just, we just each pick one. Uh, I'll let you, we, we can alternate. So, all right. So just real quick, Chiefs 49ers national anthem sung by Demi Lovato, obviously halftime show. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira are the uh, known artists, and and that's kind of the intrigue. Now, of course, these are prop bets. We're not doing like Chiefs versus 49ers and actual like necessarily that game, uh, that that kind of stuff. But so national anthem. So uh, the one of these bets is as, as as just stated, sung by Demi Lovato. The over under is at two minutes. Now, would you take the over or the under? National Anthem, two minutes. I'm going to take the over. Okay. And uh, th- so this is one of those things. Do you want me to get into things like previous uh, on any of these? Because I have those stats as well, like previous winners and things like that. Um, I, don't think, I don't think we need that. I think you just need to make sure you're writing these down so we can come back to them next week. Okay. So uh, let's see. So you're uh, sorry. You said uh, you're taking the over. I'm going to take the over at two minutes. Isn't Demi Lovato a heroin addict? Like what's she doing singing the, Ooh, uh, the national anthem question? I, I, you know what? I have no idea. All I know is she's somebody that sings and that's literally the extent of all I know about her. I, I couldn't even tell you a song that she sings. Okay. So, so there's that. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's one of those common ones. Now, uh, some of these, this is where you get into the real prop bits. Who will be the first quarterback shown during the national anthem and they're talking either Patrick mm. Mahomes who is favored or Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. So Mahomes is with the chiefs and Garoppolo's with the 49ers. Correct. Who is the uh, quote unquote home team? Uh, that, Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think it's decided until the kickoff. Technically. Okay. That's a good question. Well, the answer here is going to be Mahomes. They're going to show. Mahomes and, and why first, is that? Nobody, nobody, because, okay, here's why. Because Jimmy Garoppolo is every man white guy. What? Right? That's why. No, Jimmy he's Garoppolo's not. boring. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is the, is, I don't even know football this year, right? I haven't okay. watched a single game. I've maybe watched a half of something. And all I, I know Patrick Mahomes. All right. They're going to show Patrick Mahomes first because they, they're going to want him to succeed. All right. So let, let me throw this one at you. There was a game the Niners played. Yeah. I think it might have even been, been against my Cardinals, but at the end of the game, he was interviewed by Aaron Andrews. You know Aaron Andrews? You know who she is from Fox? Yeah. All right. So yeah. uh-huh. at the end of the game, he said she, she's interviewing him, right? Post game on the field. He, at the end, says something along the lines of like, hey, baby, at the end. And she, <laughs> she did like the whoo thing. Holy smokes. It was hysterical. Now he's, uh, he might be like uh, Italian or something like that. He's very tan. He's very tan. Good looking guy, right? So I would Jimmy bet, Garoppolo. Oh yeah. Just look him up. And you he's very yeah. For anyone out there, just look up Jimmy Garoppolo, Aaron Andrews. It is hysterical yeah. because the look on her face, she is normally very well composed. And when he did that, it's almost like he gave her a wink and he walked away and she looked flustered. Like she could not contain herself. It is hysterical. Um but because of that, I think that they will actually go with Jimmy Garoppolo. That's that's my. Well, who's okay? Well, I'm sticking with Patrick Mahomes. Okay, but the yeah. game is what on Fox. Yes, it is. It is. All right, and Aaron Andrews works for Fox. Yep, she does. Okay, so you might have something there, but I'm sticking yeah. with Mahomes. I think that's the story. All right, what's the next okay. one? Next one, the coin. To- We're kind of going in order of how the how the game will flow here. So, uh, coin toss. Okay, heads or tails. The odds are, of course, even. All Which right, one would you- I'm going to take. I'm going to take tails. All right. Uh, I'll take it heads for sure. So we're, we're in agreement. Okay, we can, uh, we can split those. Yeah, I'm, I got it right here. All right. So okay. next okay. one, then, and this, again, we're not getting into the stats of the game one-on-one stuff like that. So 
halftime show. We're skipping all the way to halftime. We don't give a fuck what happened in the first and second quarter. Halftime show, again, sung by Jennifer Lopez, Shakira. All right. Goddamn. Goddamn. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. All yes. Right, so go ahead. What's the, what's so the Jennifer yeah. Lopez is the main, main person. So she should be starting. Mm-hmm. Shakira should be joining her, uh, my understanding. Of course, no one actually knows. Now, Will and uh, maybe let's just, I got uh, one, two, three, four, five people. Uh, let's maybe each pick a couple, like one or two that we think are like the, the most probable to, to appear. But will any of these people make an appearance? Of course, the odds are completely all over the place. Here they are. Enrique Iglesias. Mark Anthony, Will Smith, Pitbull, Ricky Martin. You, do, you, do you think okay, who's Shakira? A- who's Shakira married to, and who's Jennifer Lopez married to? Is Jennifer Lopez Jennifer Lopez is with a Rod, right? Yes, I believe she still is, but okay. was with Mark Anthony at some point, right? So, so this, yeah, I'm yeah. so bad at these. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Of these, I'm only taking Pitbull because they put Pitbull on everything. Now I'd have to look this up. I think he was in one a couple of years ago. So I would almost say no because I think he's been in one. Now what I'm thinking is if I had to pick one, I would say Enrique Iglesias. Okay. That's I have a good no idea too. why. I have no idea why, but no. that's that's what I'm going. Definitely none of the others though. Enrique okay. All right. Yeah, like Will one? Smith seems a little weird, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens, right? Uh he's mm-hmm. he, he 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 could go anywhere. All right. So next one is Will, will Jennifer Lopez, yes or no, do a Selena cover? Now, what would be the motivation for doing a Selena cover? Are we on an anniversary of her death? Or are we in Mexico? Like, what? What? Why? Did you ever watch that why movie? Is this even a thing. Oh, she, oh, Jennifer Lopez. She was played? Selena. Yes. Okay. No, no, she will not do a Selena, Selena cover. Okay. I I would say that. It wouldn't surprise me if she did, but I would also say no. So I, I think we're kind of in agreement there. So we'll leave okay. we'll that on as is. All right. Will either singer drink Pepsi during no. the halftime show? No, they will not drink during the halftime show. I actually think they will because Pepsi sponsors it. So I absolutely think that they will try and squeeze that in there. At some point, someone will be holding a can and label out. Like they'll go to way too much weight. It's way yeah. too mm-hmm. too lengthy of, of a of a uh, okay. Will Jennifer Lopez show but cleavage? <laughs> I, I, I wish. But swear no. to God, this is actually. You don't think so? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. I, she's uh, but she's almost fifty now. She's not going to be showing butt cleavage, and 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 NFL wouldn't allow really? it. Really? Okay. How old was yeah. uh when Justin Timberlake and uh. What's her name, Jackson? Uh, like the Janet, whole, but that was a wardrobe Janet Jackson? malfunction. Nobody planned that. But she was out there. I'm just saying. Listen, she Ray, was we can talk there. about the Janet Jackson thing. We can go back to 2004 and talk about this because because the Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction ruined media. It absolutely it, ruined that was media like the from first that thing point that, forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, after how about that, this? Howard then Stern got suspended, and everything <laughs> sucks after that. Go ahead. How about this? Uh, how old is Beyonce in relation to Jennifer Lopez? These, this is know, me being... Know. Beyonce's in her 30s. Aren't they Jennifer about... The, no 50. way, Jen, No way yeah, Beyonce's Jennifer. in her 30s. They're like the same fucking age, dude. You want to no, make a Beyonce side bet? My Let's do age. a side bet. You want to do a side bet? Go ahead. Side bet. Is... Is... I fucking hate my Is phone. Beyonce within five years of Jennifer Lopez's age? Beyonce is 38 years old. Okay. So no, they are not within five years. Okay. Jennifer Lopez age. Jennifer Lopez is 50 years old. So I okay. win. Damn it. And you're yeah. an asshole. Yeah. That's goddamn right. What's All right. Next? Will Jennifer Lopez and Shakira kiss? Now, the oh, odds Jesus are Christ. <laughs> plus seven. Now, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is where the, these, the odds come into play. Now the yes is it plus seven hundred? The no at negative two thousand. So would you consider it at negative two thousand? No, that's no. They're not going to kiss. You think it's that ridiculous? Okay. Yes, I I agree. Absolutely, I'm with you. you. Okay. Okay. All right. (laughs) Final final halftime show one. Will there be a mal? uh, Will there be a wardrobe malfunction? 
Never again. That will never happen again. So I no. would agree with you. I would agree with you. Um, the only yeah. reason I could see that happening is they like plan it. Bullshit. Like, uh, right. And they don't, they won't. Right. They would, they would have to like plan it at this point. Right. So exotic. exotic. These are the full on exotic. Like almost have, they only have half to do with the, the game and the halftime show. All right. Will Nike run an ad featuring Colin Kaepernick? Yes or no? Of course they will because, because they have to show up. Uh, they have to show up everybody. Nike. Is worth for the, with Colin Kaepernick. So yes, I will say no. And you want to know why? Because I think that a bunch of people would actually turn the game off. Oh, I, like, I know I would because he can go fuck himself. So I think it's too controversial during the during the halftime show, like during the actual yeah, but, game. Unless they do it like at the end, uh, that you might be uh, you might be on some. All right, we, we've got a we've got a whole bunch of of woke people uh, who think they know better, and they're just they don't know that they keep pissing off normal people. Uh, so yes, they will <laughs> run a Colin Kaepernick act. <laughs> they, they they very well could. Uh, all right. So, yeah. which commercial will appear first, a Donald Trump commercial or a Michael Bloomberg commercial? Well, how do we know? Are we are we confirmed that they're both having commercials? See, well, so some of these there there have been many of these that could not happen, and therefore it'd be a push. Mm-hmm. So, in that case, it'd just be push. Okay. So we so can Donald do Trump like will not be advertising during the Super Bowl, all right? Because he gets all the advertising he needs. So I would say Michael Bloomberg has a commercial first. I completely agree with you. Now the odds are plus two seventy for Trump, negative one eighty for Bloomberg, which I think is ridiculous. Like I would, I would put a lot of money on Trump right there. So I think we're in agreement. If anything, Donald Trump will be at the game, and I don't think he'll be at the game, but he would be at the game. Ooh, that was actually one of them. Do you want me to look up the odds on that one? Because that's actually somewhat interesting. Uh, he, there's also a bunch on how many tweets he'll have. I mean, there's some. There's some. No, really I, don't want, I don't want the Donald Trump stuff. No, it'll piss off some of our audience. I don't want to do that. But you, you know what's you know what's interesting to me though is why why is that such a big deal? Like like even maybe it's just because he's such because a people, such a lightning rod, right? He's like a polar, he's yeah. such a polarizing figure, and people yeah. look at Chris O'Shea. The it, guy is on. fucking triggered every every single right? time. Uh, it's, so, yeah, it's uh, it's good for betting, I guess. Yeah, so that everybody. makes sense. I mean, all right, good good job. Keep keep pumping out, keep making money on Donald Trump's name, uh, and everyone yeah. keep paying, keep paying. <laughs> you get mad that he's making money, but every time someone mentions him, you're like, oh, cool, I'll yeah. bet on that. <laughs> like, just, come on, just, just tweet tweet at him, Re- reply <laughs> tweet to one of his yeah. tweets that he'll never see, and you'll feel better about yourself. Yeah, right? come on. and then complain that he's too popular. All right, so uh, next yeah, one. Well, any like. player, and th- these are the ones I like. Will any player propose to their girlfriend on the field after the game? No. All right. Now, the yes is plus 550. The no is negative 1,000. That means nothing to me. It's not going to happen. Okay. Yeah. So you would you would take it straight up. All right. I agree with you. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't know of any uh, romances that are ongoing. All right. Next one. Will any player be arrested in Miami after <laughs> a player, player in the game? <laughs> Not just any player, yeah. like we're talking player from both of those two teams, Niners, Chiefs. Will any player be arrested in Miami, and again, in Miami, after the game? Mm, I'm going to take a chance in this one, Ray. I'm going to say yes. Ooh, all right. I was going to say no, and the reason being, the Niners have had in the past many players. I live in the area, right? Many players that have had run-ins with the law, Alden Smith, Reuben Foster, all these guys. And they've done a good job of cleaning the house. The Chiefs, they have done the same thing. Uh, Kareem Hunt, these guys, they cut them. So I think the both organizations, and this is like deep dive behind football, they've done a good job of weeding out the bad guys. So honestly, I think that's like a fucking surefire no. Uh, but, all right, so uh, which will be higher? The movie 1917 Oscar Awards or total field goal attempts. Oh man, that's a, I'm gonna take total field goals attempted. One. Okay, okay. You know, I've heard I've heard people who don't like 1917, so I'm gonna go with total field goals. Um, see, ooh, this is tough for me. I'm gonna say that 1917. I've heard it's a generally like a w- well done movie. And I think that the fact that it's a well done movie, nothing else has competition on nostalgia and, uh, 
Americana, if you will, that I think that uh, I, I would go with that. I think they're going to take right. home a lot of awards. Uh, so which will be higher? Patrick Mahomes passing touchdowns or the movie Joker Oscar awards? Oh, man. So how many how many how many nominations does Joker have? I don't even know. Do you want me to look it up? Could you? Because that's important. Yeah. Like I, okay, I need to know that because awesome. Patrick Mahomes is, he's not going to have more than five passing touchdowns, you know, on a good day. Right. Um, and I don't even think he'll have more than two to be perfectly honest. I actually think the 49ers are going to win this game. Um, just because the, the, uh, the chiefs are so heavily Whoa. favored and they're, yeah. Um, so if I was putting money on the game, I'd be putting money on the Niners. Um, I do not think Patrick Mahomes is going to have a good game. Actually, I think. Not knowing anything about football, uh, you can quote me on this. I think the pressure is going to get to him. And Jimmy Garoppolo's experience with Tom Brady is going to do wonders for them in this game. Patrick Mahomes is going to be too, uh, the moment's going to be too big for him, and he is going to fail. Patrick Mahomes will have no more than three passing touchdowns. This will be a high scoring game. And, uh, and the Niners will be winning this game. Um, they will be winning this game, uh, 30, well, shit, 35, 24. That's right. And so uh, do we know how many Oscar nominations Joker has yet? Yes. 11 nominations. Joker will win more Oscar awards than Patrick Mahomes will have passing touchdowns. All right. So let me just throw this out there uh, because I'm I'm looking up uh, the list of films with the most awards per ceremony. Uh, Ben-Hur, Titanic, Lord of the Rings, all with 11. So, so we're in West Side Story 10, and then we start really dramatically falling off, right? Joker only needs to win three Oscar awards because Patrick Mahomes isn't having more than two touchdown passes. Now, here, here's now you're not including, you're not including running touchdowns either. This is just passing TDs. True. He's okay. So Joker, Joker's going to win. Okay. So you're going with Joker. I I will actually take passing touchdowns because, um, man, it, this is this again. I'm a big football fan. Patrick Mahomes is the real deal in many aspects of the game. He actually, yeah. like, if you actually not. watch his interviews and yeah. stuff, he gets yeah. it. He knows what yeah. it means to be an NFL. Yeah, just like Michael Vick, just like oh, Michael Vick, just like good, just like the just like Donovan McNabb. Yeah, just like all the running quarterbacks who don't last very He's long. He's not a running quarterback. End up losing the big games. Okay. He's not a running quarterback though. Do you, yeah. I have to say can, so. We're gonna end up having to disagree, like agree to disagree, because he kind yeah, of right. threw like a lot of touchdown passes last year. Like, that, like that's cool, bro. That's 50s. that's awesome. It don't mean shit. The <laughs> Niners are gonna eat him up. Okay, the Niners are not losing this game. Mark my words. Wow. Now, now I'm interested in watching this stupid game. I oh, wasn't yeah. interested before. Now I am because I didn't know this about you, Ray. Uh, I didn't know you were such a Kansas City Chiefs fan because you know what? <laughs> Fuck the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a shitty team. It's a shitty team with a shitty uniform and a shitty stadium. They can go to hell. Uh, I don't even like the San Francisco 49ers. Like, I was a Rams fan, all right, uh, in, in the wow. NFC West. Let's go Rams. Let's go Kurt Warner. Uh, let's bring it back. Let's oh, go, uh, let's go uh, Jim Everett, okay? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the Cardinals. I love the Cardinals, too. I never liked the Niners. Um, I only rooted for the Niners in that Steve Young Super Bowl when they beat the, the Chiefs because – excuse me, the, the Chargers because the Chargers suck, too. Um the, the San Francisco 49ers will win this game and Patrick Mahomes will have the worst game of his career. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's not even possible. Boom. Well, but his, his worst game of the career is like, like 10 times better than Jimmy Garoppolo's best game. So you got to kind of factor that in. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, like, mm-hmm. did you see, did you see last game? He only threw the ball. Eight no, I didn't times. see any games. Eight times. He right. threw the ball eight times. No, you see this. He that doesn't matter. The ball eight times. They're he, still going to win. Quarterback. Just, just winning. The 49ers are winning the Super Bowl this year. Uh, did did I ever tell you about the did I ever tell you about the time I was at my uh, in laws house? My, like, my grandparents in laws, and no, uh, it was, no, you the, did not. I think I might have. So it's, it was Niners Ravens, and so I started drinking a lot and being okay. Niners and Cardinals, same division. I, I'm not not a I'm I'm like anti Niners in a way. Honestly, like these Niners are pretty lovable, but. I swear to God, my grandmother-in-law told me right before the game started, she said, and this is when Colin Kaepernick was the quarterback in the Super Bowl against Holy the Raiders. Holy Christ, of tell the, the story, Ray. Jesus. And she, no, and she said <laughs> Colin Kaepernick is the best quarterback ever. 
Well, she's an idiot. And I, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, do you remember not, not just in the league, but do you remember like, I don't know, Joe Montana, Steve Young, that played for the fucking Niners. Like you, you saw them. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So the entire time, like I drank a whole 12 pack and was just sitting there. You know the, why? Just talking shit. You know shit why the, the Niners are going to win? Why? The Niners are going to win because Colin Kaepernick is not their quarterback this year. Ooh, that's yeah. interesting. That is a yeah. great perspective on this. I like that. All right. We got to rush through a few yeah. things. I appreciate your oh, football yeah. insight. Um, I feel that most of my audience doesn't care. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Prop if, bets are fun. And it'll be fun next week when I tell you, yes, the 49ers did win. Me, the Super Bowl. And, me and Joma will, will have some good side combo. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the okay. Yeah. All right. I think, I think Ray, I think we might skip dick of the week this week, but, uh-huh. but Randy did take time to send something in. So hey, All fellas, right. Randy here oh, no. with another dick of the week nomination. This week, I would like to nominate my girlfriend, Kristen. First, <laughs> oh. contact. Kristen and I have been seeing each other through three dating seasons and made it official this year and stayed <laughs> together. Dating season. Now dating season is when I take off from dating from November 20th through February 15th. This way I avoid holidays, a quarter of the birthdays, and most importantly, Valentine's Day. She's really put up with a lot, but it was time for me to tell her I love her. So I did, and she got so pissed off. I don't get it. All I said was, Kristen, I love you. But I find myself loving everyone for their intrinsic value and unique conscious experiences, so it's not special. A very lovely sentiment in my book. That's why I hereby nominate my girlfriend, Kristen, as Dick of the Week. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Randy. It's because she wanted more. Right she there. has reason to be mad. Like you let her on. Yeah. I don't know, Randy. You might flip this around. You might be dick of the week here. I, mean, I don't want to alienate another female listener. Randy, does, does, does Kristen listen? Because um, if she does, uh, you're the dick of the week. Fuck you. Fuck you, Randy. <laughs> By default, but also earned. Ba-boom. Yeah. This is a bumper for the dick tips segment. Because Ray wanted an excuse to make his voice sound cool and talk about himself in the third person. All right. So before we get started with the dick tip segment here, I do have to apologize for the quality of this episode. I am having all sorts of audio problems. Thank God we have a backup recorder in our Discord (laughs) chat. Um, I may just be using that. Right, because because my shit isn't recording the way it should be. So, okay, so uh, dick tips is um, how to reverse. Did it literally just do this? It literally just cut him out. I fucking swear to God, he, <laughs> he literally, he dude, literally, dude, 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 we did it, he, we did it. <laughs> he literally <laughs> was talking <laughs> shit. Karma, motherfucker! Oh my god, this is the. God damn it! My fucking furnace turned on, and then my fucking kids heard me cussing. God fucking damn it! (laughs) (laughs) Oh shit! I can't wait for it. Oh my god, Svenson, are you are you there, Svenson? Can you hear me? Svenson, can can you hear? You can talk for a minute here, buddy. Oh my God! What do you think of that, Svenson? What do you think of Rem being? Can you talk? You can talk right now. I, I unmuted you. Oh, in game, F- in, in game, fucking world. Right. All right, you're fucking muted. I'm gonna. F- I'm you. gonna. I'm not just gonna mute you Svenson's so you can't talk. Dick of the week, not me. I'm not just gonna mute you so you can't talk, Svenson. I'm gonna mute it so you can't hear us. Oh, dick. Just and then kidding. we'll talk about it. Do it, and we'll talk about him. Yeah, uh, pause, Ray. Paused. All right. Paused. At least yeah. Craig's getting all this, so he'll have all this goodies. I'm a so, scratch my belly now. See, Craig's about Can to redeem himself. I was talking a little shit about Craig last, I think it was last week, or maybe the week before, about how we couldn't get him to work, and I'm like, oh, fucking Craig used to be super reliable. I gave Craig. him a compliment every week, and then he then he failed us for a little, uh, for like an episode there, and you know what? He's redeeming himself right here. He probably sabotaged Rem so that he could redeem himself <laughs> intentionally. But regardless, he's still redeeming himself. And if he went to the lengths that he's going to to sabotage Rem to make this a reality, props to you, Craig. You got a high five for me. Virtual high five. Uh, there you go. There you go, Craig. Good good work. Good work, buddy. He's got ambition, baby. No. Oh, fuck. Oh, 
MPD, MVP, whatever. Street lights. <laughs> Let's just play that shit. I gotta get the virtual audio cables hooked up so I can just start playing random fucking shit. <laughs> if I have to, I'll figure it out and record. I don't give a fuck. Oh, yeah. I mean, who, who really can? Rem. <laughs> oh, was that a was it was that a sick burn? <laughs> no, not really. No. We'll, what? we'll edit that out. What'd you say? Craig, can you forget that? Can you delete that comment? Edit that out, Craig. Wait, what did you say? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what you said. <laughs> I don't, dude, I'm so fucking high right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had way too much of this fucking bourbon. Like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so I don't know what you said, but is it going to get us canceled? Probably, probably. Like, uh, dude, you got to leave transgenders out of it, okay? It's gender confirmation surgery. No, no, no. We got to include them. We got to include That's what more. I'm no, I mean, leave them out of the, the, the shit talk. God damn it. Now I'm canceled. I was just trying to help. No, but you have to include them in everything. So you got to include them in the shit talking, and you have to include oh. them in the, the complimentary aspects. Yeah, hello. It, everything. Oh, I, you where I can faintly everything. hear you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You're real faint. Yeah. Oh, hero. You ready, Ray? Uh, yes, ready. I'm just going to use the goddamn Craig track for this shit. God fucking, God damn it. I don't even know where I was. I'm talking about goddamn fucking searing a goddamn steak. Fuck everything. I'm tired of this shit. When, here's when what, here's what happened. Works. Here's how you sear a reverse sear a steak, okay? You get your, 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 your ribeye <laughs> or New York strip and then you cover it with salt. All right. Kosher salt, both sides, throw it in the fridge for at least an hour. Um, you can do up to 24 hours, but I would recommend no more than six. All right, that salt will absorb into the steak and season it all the way through. You need no other seasoning on the steak. All right, take it out of the fridge when you're ready, and you're going to throw it in your oven at 200, and 200 degrees or 250 degrees, depending on how well you like your steak done. You're going to leave it in there for an hour. Um, you have blotted the steak dry beforehand. You threw it in the oven. An hour later, after 200 degrees or 225 or 250, whatever it is, you take it out. You have a cast iron skillet. It is, it is, it is seething hot searing hot, whatever the hell the word is. It is super, super, super duper hot. Throw a little bit of, uh, a little bit of canola oil in that, in the cast iron skillet and drop your steaks in three minutes to sear on each side. Get a nice, a nice crust on it. And guess what? You're done. Reverse sear is done. All right. Your, your steak is cooked through. You've seared both sides. You now will let your steak rest for about 10 minutes or so to let all the juices reabsorb into the meat and you throw your mushrooms or whatever it is you're cooking into that same pan. You make your mushroom gravy or your mushroom cream sauce or just a side of mushrooms. I like mushrooms with my steak, Ray. That's it. That's how you reverse your steak. Ray, I apologize to you right now. I am very incredibly pissed off because none of my shit is working tonight. I'm in a really bad mood. And we need to wrap this show up. So go ahead and begin wrapping up, Ray. I'm, uh, if you had anything more to say, say it. Unless otherwise, plug your shit. Oh my God, the steak is so good. End scene. You can't hear me, can you? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to end the show here. I'm, uh, you can follow Ray on Twitter. He's at Jules Winfeld, and he's doing all sorts of stuff. So go ahead, check Ray out. <laughs> I'm not doing much of stuff. I mean, I wonder if it's even getting over there because nothing is transferring. Man, Craig is getting it. Okay. Go this Craig is amazing. Man. All right. All right. All right. Rem's going to finish the show on his own. All right. I'm sorry. I apologize for the terrible, the choppiness of this and the terrible audio. That one's on me. I don't know what's going on. The, the microphone just isn't, isn't working tonight. It keeps just disconnecting or whatever. Uh, whatever, whatever's going on, it's happening. And I Revenge of Craig. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Find <laughs> us online at richdickman.com. If you like what we do and you want to support the show, go to richdickman.com. Excuse me. Uh, go to patreon.com slash richdickman. We have uh, a couple bonus episodes up there already. Ray and I will be recording Liquor Fueled Moonshine Part 2 this weekend, uh, provided, provided all my stuff works. Uh, we'll, we'll see do how it. that goes. Um, but that's a great way to support the show. We love you over there. So you can check it out. And, uh, there's a lot of stuff. We'll do, uh, we'll do, uh, pre and post shows and, uh, bonus episodes. And if you are a patron at the five, at the second tier or the third tier, you can uh, suggest topics for us to talk about for bonus episodes. So that's great. Uh, rich, rich stickman.com. Go click, click the merch tab and get yourself a t-shirt. We've got a couple t-shirts up on Amazon and, uh, you can get them right through our website. That's awesome. And, um, Hey, thanks to Nick for reviewing our shirt on Amazon. He reviewed the Eat the Rich shirt. He liked it. 
and I uh, appreciate that. Uh, we got a show that goes up on YouTube, so if you want to check us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, Rich Dickman on YouTube. Rich Dickman Show on YouTube. That's right. And uh, all right, so we're at Rich Dickman Show at gmail.com. You can follow us at Rich Dickman Show on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. I am at Rem Dickman. And then, of course, there's producer Ryan at Ryan TRDS. There's my mother at Rem underscore mama. And I said Jules Winfeld before, but that's him. And of course, our buddy Randy at Sir Zero with an E. Man, this has been some sort of night. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, he's even doing the interruptions. I appreciate you guys listening. appreciate your support of the show. It really means a lot. Uh, we are at 92 episodes already. We've got eight more uh, till 100. And uh, we'll see what happens after 100. Negotiations have begun. The lawyers are involved. What if we send a fuel of candy gram? Thing. And, um, you know, we got to get them right. we got to get it right. You know, you don't get lawyers because you're angry. You get lawyers because you want to do it right, I guess. Why did I say Huel and he knew he Man, mentioned lawyers? Next week we'll be back. We'll have a uh, we'll we're on some different on level. Our Super Bowl bets and what is um, happening? Maybe some other fun stuff. What is happening? We'll be on the Thought Cops next week too. We'll see what happens there. But check them out. Check out Thought Cops. Check out our buddies at Not Food <laughs> Consumption. Check out our buddies at Garbage and Gold. Oh, check out Thought Cops. They're awesome. And of course, check out our buddies at the Morning Cast. If they're nice they're for all real. our friends, all great shows. Fuck so, so be cool. <laughs> and check them out. I think that's it tonight. That'll do it. I appreciate you all listening. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can do this one again. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Have a great night. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week. Good night. See ya. <laughs> We're so good at this. We don't, you know, I think we could do a whole episode without even actually hearing each other. You know what? Let's, let's do this. I'll type something. You type something. And then... And then we'll, yeah, Craig's getting it. Fuck you. All right, stop. No, you can't hear me, but I can hear you. So just, okay. Okay, hold on. I'm saying stuff, but I I know you can't hear me, but I'm still telling you what to do. So, so you. Can you, you hear me? You say stuff. Can you hear me, Rim? I'll reply. Just wait a few seconds. For my, for uh, for the response you expect from me, I'm talking now, Rim. Fuck you. <laughs> this will be great. This is going to be the best conversation. conversation. One of them can't hear. Oh He's typing. My goodness, this is amazing. You listen to Rim in his natural environment. <laughs> yes, in his natural environment. As he curls around his. As he Keyboard pulls a up a anger. Jessica Lust music, uh, not what is it, music video. <laughs> he slowly uncoils his penis. And yes. starts to stroke the end of it gently. He pulls it out of the bottom of his pants, up the pant legs, and flops it back down so the tip dangles to the floor. He sips on it like it's a straw. Because <laughs> they took away his plastic straws and he's pissed. Long dog dong is Svensson. Fuck this shit. Uh, Fuck you, Rim. We're, this is we're gonna continue. Fuck you. We're going. We're going. Wait, will, will Craig record then, me? Yes, it records everything in this channel. Fuck, okay, really? So we're going. Yes, Vincent, you gotta oh, get in here. Vincent, you better get in here. This will literally be. <laughs> I'm too pissed off right now. <laughs> Poor Rim. He's literally Poor just typing. He's so mad right now. He's literally so mad right now. He's. I guarantee you, okay, if his basement is, if, if, if the entire perimeter is made of drywall, 75% of it will have holes in it <laughs> by, the, by the end of the night. Like he will live and his fist will be raw. Like, oh, he's so fucking mad. Like he's, he's literally, he's printing out pictures of Chris OC right now, taping them on the wall and punching through them. He's like, <laughs> like, 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 fuck this shit. And anyone who's ever said a bad thing about Donald Trump, he's doing the same. He's like, ah! oh my Just god, a real thick stack. Oh no, he doesn't really like Trump that much. Or I mean, does he? It, it doesn't matter. Dudes in dead I don't minds. Give a fuck. <laughs> dudes in dead minds. Oh, that brings. Oh, back Svenson, me. you're you're gonna I'm be gonna there like six hours, one dude. More time. Hey, you know what's gonna happen, Svenson? You're you're literally you're literally gonna die so many fucking times and wipe that by the time you get back to Cookie. They're respawning at the entrance, and you're like, "Fuck this shit! I'm out of here. I'm not running this running this shit again for nothing." I remember that. 
Later, Rim. You'll hear this later. Oh, this is gonna be I so heard you. Good. So fucking best episode ever. Let me do the. Uh, let me see if I can do the end, yeah. Let's leave this as a voicemail uh, for not human consumption. Like just the whole episode. <laughs> the entire, literally, just send or it wait. Back. Let's record something now, and then you send it in or something. Oh, how do we do that? Wait, hold on. I gotta figure out how to end this thing. I never typed the command in, so hold on one second. Let me. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I gotta get to the. Uh, I forget what the fuck. I forget what the command is off the top of my head. Hold on. Hold Isn't on. it like Craig semicolon, Cain, Craig leave, semicolon? Craig yeah, it's like Craig. Oh, colon, Craig. Don't get it wrong. Rim will make fun of you. Relentlessly. <laughs>